2020 was definitely a learning year, right? Was a reflection year, was a year to um, get things dialed in. And I think that's going to, you know, that's the biggest takeaway from 2020. I've shared this with you guys before. I'll say it again is I don't, I I truly don't believe there were new lessons in 2020. I, I truly don't. I truly believe that anything we break down in 2020 was whether it's social behavior, whether it's the psychology of how people respond to fear, doubt, and uncertainty, right? Which is the pandemic. None of that's new. We, we've been talking about that. We've been addressing that. That's been a focus for a while. If we stay too high level, then everything's new and everything's new and we have to start over again. But that's not true. It's not true at all. There is no starting over on anything. It's applying and doing. Here we go. What you should have already been doing. Right? How do you inspire people to do what's best for the community? How do you inspire people to do best to do what's best for themselves? We saw it with the pandemic. We saw it with the election, right? You know, I mean, nothing's new, right? I saw a great post about social media the other day, and this this has been my take from the get go, right? And I understand there, there's a whole another level, and there's a whole generation growing up on just this. But let's stay in the middle. Let's stay with the 30, 40, 50 year olds, right? We all have access to the same exact information. It's what we do with that information. And to say, well, it's Facebook's fault, it's Twitter's fault, it's, it's Instagram's fault for anything, I, I, I disagree. I disagree. There's accountability there. Yes, there's accountability. But to say it's their fault, I disagree. We all are given the same information. We all then do what we want to do with the information based on whatever we've chosen to do prior to that, right? How do we process stuff? Right? Where do we go to learn more? How do we critique? And by critique, I, I, mean, I don't mean you need to be able to read research. I'll just say this. There, there was nothing new to be learned in 2020. 2020 showed us the stuff we already knew magnified a thousand times. Social behavior, right? People's inability to want to look beyond their biases and beliefs. And by the way, this is zero judgment. Because this existed in January and February of 2020, and it's existed in the history of time. I already said fear, doubt, and uncertainty. Well, I've been talking about fear, doubt, and uncertainty. All right? When someone calls your clinic, they have fear, doubt, and uncertainty. Will it hurt? Did I call the right place? Will it cost too much? Will I know where to park? Will my physical therapist be someone who can help me? Will it be a man or a woman? I mean, all that fear, doubt, and uncertainty is what people bring into their real life world every single day. And again, 2020 magnified that. And when I reflect back on 2020 and look at what happened and what needed to be done, I've just magnified the work that I said everybody needed to do, right? And it's understand people better, understand your clients better, understand your patients better. Right. And everybody say, oh, yeah, we do that. We build relationships. And I'm like, no, <clears throat> that's not good enough. That's not good enough. Talking about using these phrases, building relationships, um, anything else we may talk about here is not enough. You got to go back and look at it as a business and show me the structure and show me the template for building relationships. And the only way you can build relationships is to understand the journey that you and that person are on together. Ah, now we're getting somewhere. So when I say, how do you build relationships right, in your business? And I, I think it does apply to personal life, but we're not here to talk about personal yet. Let's just say we could apply this stuff to personal, right? As you tell me, you build relationships, and I say, how do you do that? You should tell me, well, Jerry, I understand the journey and where people are in that journey when I first meet them. And I go, sounds like someone who's figured out what building a relationship means. Right? And, and that's what you must do in 2020. One. And by the way, that was a great slip because you should have done it in 2000. You should have done it in 2005. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. You should have been doing it prior to COVID. And I've shared this prior to the pandemic, right? The people who had and understood 
the relationships they built and what those relationships were built on. That's really important too. So not only understanding the journey, because if you understand their journey, then you understand what you're building the relationship on. And when March 13th came, those people, and by the way, we can define this however we want, but they had more success than the people who didn't. And let me give you a prime example of this. If you had relationships built on answering the phone and getting people onto the schedule and making sure you knew they took your insurance, then that's the relationship that you're building. So th this is the thing again about understanding a patient's journey and everything else. So you say, we build relationships. We got a lot of patients in here. And I'm like, cool. What, it, what are the relationships built upon? If they're just built upon making sure you know we take your insurance, then everybody found that out right? on March 15th. Man, we called every single client, right? Nobody answered. Nobody wanted to reschedule. Nobody wanted to schedule telehealth. I heard this more than anything. And I said, well, you got to go back and look at the relationships you had built and what were they based upon? And again, the better you understand the journey, your patient's life cycle within your business, then the better relationship you can build built on the things that they should be built on, which is not insurance and insurance building. Relationships built around the person, their goals, their desired outcomes, their expectations, plain and simple. The sooner, boy, imagine a first date here. The sooner in the patient's journey with your business, you learn their desired outcomes and their expectations, the greater the relationship will be. That may include letting them know you take their insurance, but that can't be the only thing. Again, think about a first date. So let's go to the personal side. Think about a first date. The more I know I have that person sitting on the other side of the table from me, right? The more successful I can be in this relationship, plain and simple, plain and simple. Everybody, 100% of the people would agree upon that. So why wouldn't we apply that to the business? First phone call. The more I know about the person on the other end of the phone, the better the relationship will be. So again, if I understand their journey within my business, the patient life cycle, then I can start to build this out way earlier. And then I could start to write down and define the systems and the processes for building a stronger relationship. A relationship built on taking your insurance is a relationship. It's a weak relationship, right? As with anything. Right. And you could go back to the personal life again and the dates and think about, right, those relationships you've had and what they were based on. Right. And think about your strong relationships and the weak relationships and the ones that broke off, whether it's and by the way, communication builds a strong relationship. So when I understand my patient's journey within my life cycle, just got off the phone with one of my employees this morning. Right. We are mapping out the whole phase two of the patient's journey within the business that they're working with. And phase two of that patient life cycle is about communicating, delivering on promises. So managing and setting expectations, right? I said expectations. So I'm managing and setting expectations. And then that whole phase two is to keep doing it, keep doing it, right? Are you delivering on the promises you made on the first phone call? Are you communicating with them a little further to continue to build trust and decrease fear, doubt, and uncertainty? right? This is all only after you understand the patient life cycle, right? So this front desk success I speak of, this front desk training and everything, it's only a small part. Now, mind you, it's the entry point. It's the beginning part. It has a huge impact. Yet overall, it's only a small part of the whole program. And by program, I mean, right? Phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four. And the better you understand your patient's life cycle, the easier it is to build out those phases. The easier it is to insert the systems into the process. I like to call the patient life cycle the process. And the better you understand the process, then the better you can develop the phases and put the systems into the phases. This is what you need to do for 2021. Then you need to get your team dialed in on that patient life cycle because each team member plays a significant role during different phases. And there's a lot of overlap, right? The front desk owns phase two, but then they become support 
in phase three. The front desk owns phase two and the providers run support. When you understand the patient's life cycle, everybody will understand their role in patient success. And then you don't have providers pushing back when you ask them to jump on a phone with a potential new patient because everybody understands their role during these different phases to create patient success. And each phase has its objectives that feed the bigger objective of a completed plan of care. But again, what you and your physio business must do in 2021 is understand your patient's life cycle within your business. Every single touch point and interaction that your potential patients and clients have with your business all the way through a completed course of care all the way around until they engage with you again. And re-engagement can be they tell their doctor, they tell their friends, they tell their neighbors, whatever. But that's that patient life cycle, right? If you would like a copy of the patient life cycle I share with others that I've created for my business, you can comment below and just write down patient life cycle, whatever you want. I'm happy to share that with you. I don't even know how to share the screen here. Otherwise, I wouldn't. I'd show it to you. Sorry, because I'm just doing this straight from Facebook. So... If you want a copy of that patient life cycle, just write patient life cycle below and I'll ping you. I hate that. I'll ping you. I'll message you and I will send you a copy of that <clears throat> just so you have an idea of what I'm talking about. But this thing you and your physio business must do in 2021 is understand your patient's life cycle. So you can do what? So you can build better relationships that result in. Here's the other thing too. We build relationships. I'm like that result in what? What's the end result? What's the end game here? The end game for, a, for understanding your patient life cycle is patient success. And I actually define patient success. There are, 10, there are 10 bullet points that must be checked off. And guess what? All of it is things that must happen throughout their entire life cycle with the company. And it goes in order. So if we're moving them through our life cycle and everybody's doing their job, then you're just checking boxes. And if you can check all 10 boxes then you more than likely have patient success and you have been successful building a relationship with that person during their life cycle with your company. Again, this all starts from understanding your patient's life cycle. This is what you must start doing in 2021. Again, you should have started in 20. You should have started in 19. You should have started in 18. No more we build relationships because if you can't tell me how or what they're based on or what your desired outcome is, right? It's funny because everybody tells me they build relationships or a lot of the clinics that are worried more about insurance and insurance billing. I say, to what result? That you get paid? Payment's a result, by the way. By the way, I love capitalism. I love making money in healthcare or no, in business, sorry. Payment is the result. It is the ultimate trust measure, right? When someone will part with their hard-earned money, they're saying, I trust you and I trust the service, the product, whatever you have, right? Plain, simple, your physio business must start to map out and understanding your patient's life cycle within your business. Every touch point and interaction they have from the moment they become aware of your brand until they move all the way through the life cycle and re-engage again. And you and I both know you have multiple entry points into your business. So you got to understand every entry point. Now, eventually they'll all squeeze down and come to the same place, like your front desk or something like that, or customer arrival, right? But again, the entry point into your business, sorry, the awareness of your business, the marketing phase, phase one can be multiple entry points, could be four or five, six different things. No big deal you got to map them out. If you want your front desk, right? That's the marketing. If you want your sales team, the marketing team to be successful, they must understand every entry point and what must happen. If you want them to build relationships built around trust and decreasing fear, doubt, and uncertainty, they must understand where everybody's coming from. If you want your team to be successful, they must understand. This is, this is a huge result of this. And we're going to go 20 and quit today. Team culture, burnout. <clears throat> when you understand, listen to this, hopefully you stuck around, because when you understand your patient's life cycle within your business, when you understand the team's roles within the patient life cycle, when you understand the phases, you will decrease burnout of all your team members because everybody's working towards the same goal. And every discussion I see around burnout and everything like that is about the individual, never about the team working together. 
And when a whole industry is burning out, I always kind of, hmm, because it's a lot of egos and a lot of me, me, me. I can't practice. I can't do what's right. Well, right. That's a team culture thing. So what are you going to do to change the culture? Let's get the focus, right? Remember I told you money is the result. Let's get the focus back on patient success. And when we start focusing on patient success, that means all team members are playing to their strengths. Front desk people, aides, assistants, physical therapists, billing team. What, what I always love is I always go into businesses and they're like, this is the front desk team. This is the provider team. This is the back office team. I'm like, that's three separate teams. That's front desk team members. That's your provider team members. It's the billing back office team members because we're all working towards one common goal, patient success, a completed plan of care. And if everybody is working towards that goal, then when a front desk person picks up the phone, they know what they need to do right in their phase of this patient's journey with this individual person to create patient success. Then the provider knows what the front desk is doing, right? And the provider builds on that. So I call it the trust trajectory. I love that word. So every day that goes by, there's more and more trust being built. And what I love about building trust is that more trust you have built, then you can afford to take some hits. The billing mistake, the cancel, the no-show, right? Whatever it is, you can afford to take some hits. The greater trust is, right? You can afford to take some hits. But when you have low levels of trust and it was just built around, do you take my insurance or not? <clears throat> there's no trust there. Boom, one hit to trust and they're gone. They drop off. Okay, so what you and your physio business must start doing in 2021 is understanding this patient life cycle within your business. You must map out all the touch points interactions. It's going to be great for revenue. It's going to be great for your patients. It's going to be great for team culture. I guarantee it. We've seen it before. I saw it before 2020. I saw it in 2020. And it is the only thing. It doesn't matter service. It doesn't matter Freaking telehealth, it doesn't matter, manual therapy, it doesn't matter anything. It is the only consistent thing that existed before and continues to flow out of this. So it has nothing to do with your practice, has nothing to do with your service, has nothing to do with your treatments. It has everything to do about understanding the people you serve better. All right, that's what you guys must do in 2021. If you want that patient life cycle, Comment below, right? Just type in patient life cycle and I will get it to you so you guys can get an example of what it is. And I mean, it took me, what, 12, 13 years to finally figure that thing out. And I'm telling you, it's the only consistent thing. All these books, all these successful businesses understand their clients, their desired outcomes, and the life cycle within their business. All of them. That's it. That's the consistent thing in all these books. It stood the test of time. It's been standing the test of time. It will supersede the pandemic. It has. Everybody who had great relationships going into March still have great relationships. Those people who leveraged new relationships in March, April, May have customers, clients, patients for life. There's still fear, doubt, and uncertainty. It's shifted. We still have to manage all that. Fear, doubt, and uncertainty will never go away. Building trust will never go away. So how are we going to manage this day in and day out? Understand your patient life cycle. We're starting December. We got 31 days. You guys can start working on this now. You need to hit 2021 with this stuff going full bore. Trust, fear it out, and uncertainty, right? Understanding the patient life cycle solves so many problems. It really does. I think we will leave it at that. I still ran over, but closer and closer every day. All right. Cheers, all.